Hi, welcome to another Flip Chart Friday. On today's episode, we're talking about one of my favourite topics. I know I might say that all the time because actually I enjoy what I do, but personalisation is what we're talking about today, and I've kind of built my business on personalisation. So when people come into the studio, I always make sure that we kind of tailor the TV, we have their kind of brand, their name, and when I see personalisation in other people's business, I kind of assimilate those ideas into what we do. So over the piece, it looks like personalisation is a big thing at Hybrid Anchor, but what we've actually done is we've kind of accumulated this off of people that we've came into contact with. Um, a great example of that is actually our television. So we have a kind of slide deck that actually plays on a loop, and what we would do is we'd have on there that Hybrid Anchor welcomes person's name from business's name, and it's branded as them. So it features two or three times within that slide deck, and it ensures that the customer knows that we have taken effort that they are coming in. That idea is something that I've kind of pinched, if you will, off of one of our clients, NGM Accountants, where I actually noticed that when I went to his office, he had a kind of poly pocket that was printed out with my name on it, and I thought, it makes you feel important, it makes you feel like that person cares that you've came there to their office. So these little kind of ideas, keep an eye out for them, because personalization is a really big thing, and that's what I wanted to talk about, is using personalization in a sales process, so that you can kind of get leverage, and get an additional kind of assistance with that sale by basically personalizing it to the person you're talking about. Let's get started. So why does personalization actually work? Why is it something you should consider for your business? Well, the first and foremost thing is personalization is all about people. And business is all about people. So I'm a big believer, a big advocate that People over profits, one of our core values on the wall behind me, just behind this bookcase. And the whole reason for that is I've kind of worked out that your network is your most valuable asset in business. It's not about selling people you meet, it's about converting those people into close connections, contacts that actively want to help you grow your business. So when you meet someone, if you're genuine and you want to kind of help them grow their business, they're much more inclined to help you grow your business back in return. Whereas if you look at them purely as a transaction, you're not going to get that kind of return for it. So I've kind of put here that people buy from people, and it's a big important factor to take away from this, is try and focus on the relationship and be personal with the people you come into contact with and lose that kind of transactional element. I notice it with a lot of amateur salespeople. I get what they're trying to do because they've probably got KPIs and they're thinking every person I meet represents a potential sale. And while that is true, that's looking at the kind of little edge of the wedge, you're better to look at it and say, this person probably knows about 10 people that would be a good fit for my business, so it would make much more sense to become friends with them and see if there's a way I can help them. It might not necessarily be a referral, it might be a bit of advice, it might be just a shoulder to cry on if they're going through a struggle. You being there for that person means that they can see that you're genuine and they want you to do well, and it kind of is, definitely comes back to you as reciprocity, and it helps you kind of grow your business through that. The next one is everyone likes it when you focus on them. So have you ever noticed that? If you're kind of talking to someone and you say, I did this, I achieved that, I've got awards in this, or I'll wait till I tell you this story, the person's engagement will go down because you're talking about yourself, whereas everybody loves talking about them. So the best thing that you can do is to actually show genuine interest in what they're talking about. So I'm like this by default, but even if you're not like that by default, see just setting yourself a reminder about that in a meeting, try to consider when I've got this person in my office, I'm going to really make a big thing about focusing on what they're telling me. You've got two ears and one mouth, use them in proportion. Make sure that you are actually focused on them and you're trying to kind of look for, that's really interesting, how does that work? How did you get into that out of interest? Actually just be curious about it. You're going to learn a ton just by focusing on what it is and it really is like a free education. Most of the business kind of skills I've picked up are from talking to people that are a lot smarter than me. And I think just by humbling yourself in the fact that you might be good at what you do, in fact you might be really good at what you do, but by focusing on the other person and like showing them that you value their opinion, you're really going to hear a lot more kind of nuggets and value for your own business. That's two really great ways you can use personalization to like really expedite and grow your business. So let's talk about good use cases for personalization. What are the types of personalization that you can employ in your business? So one of them is names. So we kind of spoke about that with the TV a little bit. 
That could be salutations on emails, that could be personalization when they log into a portal. So it can be like, welcome back, Mr. Loudon. Since you've last been here, there's two new opportunities or whatever it is in a piece of software. Um, actually remembering the person's name or even like kids' names or wife's names, partner's names, people really value that. So when you remember things like that, like Bobby was going for his um, test for the football team last time that we spoke. So just by showing them that, that first initial couple of minutes, how have you been, how's the family, how did Bobby get on by the way? Did he actually pass, did they get that? And they're like, oh yeah, that, oh, that's great, I'm surprised you remember that. When people are saying to you, I'm surprised you remember that, that's showing you that they find value, that you've really paid attention to them, you've listened to them. Remembering birthdays, so I'm giving a wee bit of the secret sauce here, but back in the day when I started out kind of networking, when I went into an office, I would often kind of try to find the business owner's birthday online. So if you look at something like Company's House, it will tell you the date of when they were actually born. So they were born, let's say, in November 1987 or something like that. But you could actually ask the secretary on your way out. So as you're passing, you kind of turn back around and you go, apologies. You know, Gary told me that his birthday was in November. It was the same uh, someday in my family. You wouldn't have to have the date for that, would you? And then they say, oh, it was the 18th. And you say, fantastic. So it was the 18th. That's right. And you leave again. Now, if you sent them a personalised gift, which could just be a birthday card, or it could be like a branded t-shirt or a mug or something like that, around about two weeks before their birthday, and you say, listen, big man, no, it's not your birthday for two weeks. There's just a cup. Have a cup of tea. Put the feet up meant to take some time off for the family as well. A lot of people will be quite surprised by that because now we've came into a culture where we only really remember birthdays if someone tells us or if Facebook actually alerts us to today is this person's birthday. So try to be unique, try to be different to what everyone else is doing. In a sea of 100 messages saying congratulations or happy birthday, you could be that one person that stands out by taking personalization just that little touch further. You personalize a gift. So everyone likes that. If you notice that somebody's a runner and you can get them like a gym t-shirt or you know you notice that that person does networking so you get them something specifically to do like a business card holder or a notepad. These kind of things are branding opportunities but it also shows that you're paying attention to what their interests are. Um, one of the ones I noticed for gifts was quite interesting. There's an office I went to, they had things like chocolate eclairs or uh, cho uh, mint limes. So they actually had like different products that were based on the people coming in. And it surprises people because they're like, well, how did they know I had a, a gluten intolerance? Or how did they know that that was my favorite cake or favorite sweetie that was there? That makes a big difference. And if you think about it, you do this for yourself when visitors come to your home. So when your friends come to your house, you often kind of put on food that they like or buy in drinks that they like because you want them to have a nice experience. And I'm all about trying to pull that experience into your business to use personalization, a little kind of character preferences to help you kind of warm up the relationship with your client. Remember, they order how they like their tea as well. So if you know somebody's like a milk and two sugars, you say, you want a cup of tea? And they go, yep. And you make the cup of tea and it goes to them. And they're thinking, I never actually said anything. That's actually a nice thing as well. And it's an easy thing to keep on a file. We used to keep out a printed sheet of A4 paper with all our kind of clients and then what their preferences was. It's like, you want a tea, you want a coffee? And that was always going to work in your favor. And it's quite impressive for people as well because they're thinking, how did they know that? Or they've not even really asked that I want milk or sugar. They're just automatically giving me what I expected. And then you kind of notice that with things like shops and roll vans and cafes. They'll kind of go with that to you, just the usual. And that's them remembering you're a regular. Everybody likes feeling like a regular. So although that's maybe a different industry to what you're in, try and pull that into your own business as well. And the last one was shown that you listened last time. So we did talk about that there. Remembering things, anecdotes from the last conversation you had, like their son went to a football game or their, their daughter had like an important event at school or a graduation. Try and show that genuine interest. And I don't mean just fake it in the sense of, yeah, 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 I'm interested, because people can sense that. I would genuinely try to befriend that person and kind of warm up the relationship. You're always going to benefit by doing that. Whereas by not paying attention to that, there's going to be someone out there that does. And people buy from people. So if that's a nicer person that looks after them, they're really personal, they're going to get the business and you're not.
Okay, so let's talk about tips and takeaways. Think about what you could do to enhance your selling experience. So what can you do? Can you have, you know, Coca-Cola and Pepsi Max in your meetings? Can you do something that stands out? That's when they're in for a kind of experience, like offering them fruit or biscuits or just little touches that really set you apart. Remember that it's often the simplest things in personalization that make the difference. So it doesn't need to cost a lot of money. You know, we put their name in a TV. It takes me maybe about five or 10 minutes to get the slide sorted out. I would be orderly anyway, so I'd be making sure that everything was prepped prior to them coming in the meeting. So by me doing that with the television, it shows them a bit of effort, but it doesn't actually cost me any money to do it. Printing their name on a piece of paper, similar, very low cost, not something you would be worried about. And always look to foster strong relationships. I can't say this enough guys, the relationship is king in every angle of that. And your network is your net worth. So invest in it. Make sure that you're kind of showing people that you care and that you want to benefit their business. You want to build relationships with them, partnerships, work with your clients, not just sell to your clients. Don't be transactional, be proactive and help them. You'll do a lot better. That's been another Flipchart Friday from Hybrid Anchor and I'll catch you next week. Yeah.